Good morning, Richard. Good morning, Andrew. Uh, this is the Friday after the release of Oroco's PEA earlier this week. And I'd like to congratulate both of you and the entire team on a job well done. Uh, PEA is the culmination of uh, three and a half years of work at Santa Damas, starting with the 3DIP program uh, through to 49,000 plus meters of, of drilling uh, at the project and uh, collective work of uh, really over 100 people from around the globe, um, a lot of professionals from uh, across the Americas uh, and several firms independent of Oroco who put together this PEA. We're very excited by the numbers, um, 2.3 billion NPV, 9 billion free tax or free cash flow over life of mine, 20 year mine life, low strip ratio, low upfront capital for uh, very robust 107,000 tons on average uh, of copper being produced per year for 20 years. So terrific numbers. Um, I will say that uh, these numbers are the result of a first phase of exploration at Santa Tomas, uh, as opposed to an exhaustive drill program, exhaustive engineering, exhaustive everything of the, of the potential at Santa Tomas. So there's a lot left on the table. The news release detailed uh, 11 items that we'll focus on going forward, where there's optimization, improvement, growth of the resource, uh, et cetera, that, uh, that all have the potential to, uh, to improve these numbers and optimize the mine plan. So uh, thanks guys, thanks for, uh, for a great deal of work. Uh, thank you, Andrew, for corralling the team in, uh, in Choix and on site. Uh, and thank you, Richard, for uh, for quarterbacking this whole process. Thanks, Adam. Yeah, no, exciting times. Uh, when we stopped the drilling uh, earlier this spring, uh, we were we we knew we had something pretty good, and we were really excited to see what numbers we'd come up with once we threw a PEA onto this and a and a mine plan. So getting over two billion dollars was was exactly what we were aiming for and hoping for, and I think. Uh, that's that's a testament to the hard work of all the people involved that we uh, we got some great numbers and uh, you know this is a great project today as it stands but as you as you mentioned in the intro there we're super excited about future work as well and we know we can increase this number significantly and uh, as we finish up this PEA we're already thinking about the next stage of work and uh, and the and everything that's going to come together to to uh, make this a bigger number and a more attractive project. So no, exciting times for us. And uh, Andrew can maybe list a few of the things that we're, that we're looking at and uh, that has got us excited. What's we'll sort of laid out in the PEA, some of, these, uh, some of these upsides that we saw. As you do a PEA, it's not exhaustive. You don't look at all the different options. You throw a basic plan on, uh, on paper and, uh, and you see where that comes. But as you do it, you get excited about doing it better. And uh, that's the stage we're at right now. Yeah, exactly right, Richard. There's uh, um, a lot of work that went into the PEA, and and as we we went along doing it, basically a, a lot of uh, opportunities bubbled to the surface. And it's both on the on the exploration side that we sort of knew about when we stopped drilling, but also on the engineering side of things. Um, on the exploration side, we still have a very large untested uh, IP chargeability resistivity anomaly. That sits to the southeast of the south zone. Um, our intention is to, to probably drill that in the next uh, round of uh, uh, drilling that's upcoming, uh, possibly late this year, early next year. And that needs to be done. Uh, it's either a condemnation hole or a discovery hole. So either one is, is of value to us, obviously. Um, but the other thing about the PA that we realized pretty early on is you know, some of the big cost drivers are diesel and electricity. So, you know, we found. Uh, some real upside in there as the, as the project is designed right now. Um, for example, we have a coarse crusher that sits outside of the pit and requires a very large capital expenditure to actually locate and site uh, in terms of earthwork. And um, so we, we looked at that and, you know, one obvious answer to that is to, to put in some in-pit crushers with a conveyance to the mill. Uh, huge diesel saving. Um, we, we use over a billion uh, liters of diesel over the life of the mine. So anything we can do to, to cut that back is, is money for us uh, uh, back into the MPV of the project. Yeah, and if I understand correctly, the, the, the possibilities to, uh, probabilities, I guess, in some cases to, to improve on the mine plan 
uh, include infill drilling within the pit, as well as the drilling you refer to outside of the current pit, uh, some geotechnical holes, um, which would allow for optimization of the pit wall angle, um, and a number of other things. I, I encourage people to read the news release because it is thorough. It is thorough, is very informative, uh, is very approachable. Um, one comment I have got from, from people is that um, while the production scenario, the CapEx, the OpEx all look terrific, um, they thought the after tax in the NPV was uh, at a greater discount to the pre tax than, than PAs or PFS figures that they're accustomed to. So I do want to mention that there are a number of tax optimization strategies that were not detailed in this, in this PA that did result in that greater than typical discount. Um, yes. So, so we, we used as the young as our tax advisors uh, on the project and we, and we did run out of time a little bit. We needed to get this uh, PA out, but I see further opportunities in refining uh, how we design the project a little bit around the tax implications of depreciation. Uh, I think we, I have no question we can do better uh, than, than we published, but what we published is, is a very real, uh, very little real situation, but yeah, could we do better in the execution to reduce that tax burden? I think we could. Yeah, I think what the PA demonstrated to me is that, uh, you know, with uh, with an average annual uh, revenue of a billion dollars with C1 costs, uh, cash costs of dollar uh, sixty, if I recall, dollar sixty six perhaps, um, send it to mass is a potential cash generating machine. Uh, how that cash is accounted for, how that revenue is accounted for was not meant to be the subject of this study. But as I understand, there are a number of mitigation strategies that um, that a real world operation would would put into effect. So uh, perhaps we'll touch on those in, in subsequent studies. But um, the, the big takeaway was that there's a, a low capital intensity, very low capital intensity, um, low upfront capex per ton uh, or per pound of annual copper production high levels of production high enough at 107,000 tons per year to um, uh, to be meaningful to even the big players on the planet, uh, a long mine life, and a lot left on the table. Um, among other things, uh, a lot of the resource um, was excluded uh, from this plan because of uh, our interest in, in not having a river diversion as being part of this plan. So in subsequent years, subsequent decades of operation of Santa Tomas, uh, there's a significant resource and potential additional resource through drilling uh, on the north end um, where the river is um, that could come into play. And also, yeah. those, they, as, as Andrew mentioned, is the area to the south uh, east of the south pit. And then between the north and south pit as well, yeah. uh, the guys have got some good ideas on some holes. Very steep area, difficult to drill, but we'll, uh, they've got that figured out and, and we'll put a few holes in there. And that, that, then that just turns into ore, and uh, we'll go into the into the resource. Yeah, and that, right. that sort of highlights our, our efforts to try and reduce diesel consumption. You have to haul out of the south pit right at the top of that pillar. If you can turn that into ore, you make money on the ore, and you also make money on diesel savings. So yeah. there's, there's so many good things we can do at the project. Um, it's just a it's be a question of you know wrapping those mm -hmm. up, deciding what we need to focus on, and uh, spend some money on it. Then one of the most exciting things we're working on right now, we have some test work underway in the lab around sulfide leaching and uh, just just looking at some rough idea. I mean, we, 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 we would then be able to lower the cutoff grade and some waste, some that goes to waste now would go to a leach pile and we could leach that. We'd also add oxide material that is waste at the moment would go into that leach pile. So we're talking about releasing a significant additional pound of copper for uh, for a very minimal capital uptake, we'd have to put a SXEW plant in and, and build some leach pads. Uh, so that that uh, but no additional mining cost because we're we're moving that material anyway. So that works ongoing uh, test work. Um, uh, hopefully, will be successful and uh, we'll roll that into uh, into the mine plan. And that carries the potential for lower capex, lower opex, and result in higher yeah metrics. i mean more copper for for minimal additional capex and uh and a very low opex because we're already mining it and and your your operating cost is for recovery is much lower than in a concentrator so 
um that's exciting um yeah my plan we probably got the wrong size of equipment the way we did it we were thinking originally we'd run for longer at 60,000 tons a day but when we ran the numbers it was clear it was better to expand sooner um so we we, we need to upsize make, make the fleet bigger that involves a different pit because the trucks are bigger so you need slightly wider roads uh so that work we will we will get underway at the right time um yeah as, as andrew mentioned we we picked a place for the crusher and it probably wasn't ideal with with hindsight once we laid out the pits um, we're hauling up over the hill and down the hill to drop it in the crusher and the the crusher the 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 conveyor from the crusher to the mill is over a big valley with a uh, big fill in there that's expensive to build so you know all these areas come up as you develop it but we don't have time to uh to make all the changes we want to make so this this next stage of work will give us that time to uh one make savings two produce more copper find more resource and lower our overall cost i mean all things that uh we've got a base of 2.3 billion dollars to work from and, and we'll be working real hard and i know we've got ways to make that number uh go up just one thing i'd like to say about the plan as well adam remember we, we've done this in a inflationary environment and uh so ours is an up-to-date plan when uh if you'd done your plan a year ago your costs would have been significant your capital and operating costs would have been significantly lower so ours is a is a as of uh today basically uh costs and and we're still super robust so uh i'm uh I, i'm i think we stand up very well against all our uh, all other projects around the world well so yeah, exactly. a, a fair comment that if one wants an apples to apples comparison with other similarly large copper projects uh take a look at the the input costs on those studies and any study done more than even a few months ago uh will like yeah i was i was i was shocked i'd last done a major feasibility study in uh well andrew and i did it together in 2001 and the say i mean cost increases for them are just unbelievable 30 percent on on a lot of equipment uh cost increases that uh is quite shocking and labor has gone up as well uh, fuel prices are up. Everything, everything is up significantly, but that's fully reflected in the plan that we've got. And one of the super interesting charts to look at is the is the sensitivity to copper price uh, we have. I mean, I think we put a 385 copper price into our economics. Um, you you just take a look at that graph and you see how uh, how sensitive we are to an increase in copper price. That uh, um, if 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 we believe and i think we all believe that copper is a great place to be um you know you get over four dollars and it's an awesome place to be it's pretty steep uh steep line in that sense of yeah. showing the tremendous leverage to copper prices right so on the subject of going forward um our shareholders are going to want to want us to comment on on costs and i think the, the detail in the news release as to those items we're going to be focusing on going forward suggests uh, the, the plan from here forward is a finite one. We, we know what we need to do. We know that the additional drilling, uh, for instance, is is perhaps a fraction of, of what we've done already. <clears throat> so we, we've got a sense of what, what needs to be done. The costs are, are finite. Um, and in relation to our current market cap, uh, I think uh, a financing to 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 get us the that capital is going to be minimally dilutive so um in that sense i think uh, shareholders should know that you know we've got a plan it's financeable uh there is a, a relatively near point in the future where we think we're going to um complete this plan so uh just to comment on that do we do we think the budget going forward for how many meters how many well, i mean significantly less than obviously we had a major spend one building all the infrastructure at site cost a lot of money last over the last three years we had a massive drill program we had seven drills running in the fall of last year um and towards the end of the end of last year um no we're talking a much smaller program we own a drill ourselves that we'll utilize and uh you know it's a one or two drill program that we need to put in place to do what we've just talked about um you know our costs our costs are going to be significantly though and then a little engineering cost we've got some lab work going on um at the moment 
but but small costs compared with uh, with where we were. So no, very uh, very doable for a reasonable uh, capital raise. And and timeline is um, you know some of the lab work takes the leaching work takes a little bit of time. But we're, we're working on a plan maybe to update the PEA somewhat with some of these ideas ahead of going towards a full PFS. Yeah, and just to further comment on that drilling program, yes, yeah, we're going to multitask all of those holes. So there'll be geotechnical holes looking at pit slope, um, possible improvements, but they'll also double as a resource enhancement holes. Uh, same thing in the pillar, even down to a, a you know a water well that we will drill on the the north zone, uh, just to look at um, possible pit inflow rates. That that will double as a resource hole as well. So it, it's going to be a engineering drill program plus a resource program laid over the top of it it's a quite effective spend of money terrific and i, I think we well, we have been very efficient so far uh both in terms of capital spend uh, and time <clears throat> we we've published this pa three and a half years after the ownership uh the legal title dispute was was resolved uh two and a half years from the receipt of the, the drill permit um, we executed a forty-nine thousand meter drill program quite rapidly and um, and the PA has come together very quickly following the conclusion of that drill program. So I think um, that speaks volumes about the, the capacity of the team, the professionalism of the team and um, what shareholders should uh, be able to expect going forward over the next six, 12 and 18 months. So absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, uh, we will deliver and uh, we're excited to do it. Okay, with that, uh, I think we can probably conclude. Uh, thank you very much, gentlemen. I look forward to the next stage uh, of development of, uh, of Santo Tomas. And uh, uh, Andrew, big uh, big thanks to the team at uh, Ranchito in Mexico, where you are today. Please uh, give them my gratitude. I will do. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, gentlemen. Bye.